for that. Hi, everybody. Hope you can hear me. If you can't, just pop something into the group chat. Hopefully, you'll all say hello. I can see we've got people from far and wide. We've got somebody from Saudi today, so um, I won't moan about the heat. Um, I hope everybody can hear me, and I hope you can see me as well. Now, I've had some lovely feedback, actually, so thanks ever so much for that. Somebody said this was their weekly therapy, so um, hopefully today, this week will be just as useful and just as soothing. I'm going to concentrate on literature today. And what I thought I'd concentrate on is a little bugbear of mine, and that is the understanding of context. People are saying, some people say they can hear, some people say they can't. If you're really having problems, you need to go into the Q&A box. Hopefully most people can. I'm hoping... And, and that, right, let's move on to your starter questions then, and hopefully everybody's okay. Um, which two paintings would Arthur Burling have on his dining room wall? Now, I've chosen all of these for a reason, hopefully to give a little bit of character insight, but also to help with context. Now, obviously, we've got the king there. I'm assuming Arthur Berlin would go for the king um, because he would be quite a royalist. Um, the bot the, the, moving on to the left-hand side, the top is a classic landscape, classic English landscape. I'm assuming, again, he'd be a traditionalist, so that would be there. So, again, it's getting across the character and the context. The middle one is the Crimea War. So again, that whole idea of sort of nationalism, of, of pride, of, um, of um, militarism as well, really, being something that Arthur would presumably believe in. Uh, and then the bottom uh, was just, I, I've been teaching Jekyll and Hyde, so I was kind of thinking about the scientific side, but I was thinking new ideas, science, is not something that, that Arthur would be going for. And then the middle is an Impressionist painting, and they are all Edwardian. And I'm thinking that that would be way out of his scope. He certainly wouldn't want anything quite so feminine and fluffy on his walls. Okay, so that was just a starter there for you to get started. And I've used that very successfully in the classroom only recently. So let's look at what we're doing today. As I said, it's a literature focus. Um, usual there, if you've been with us before, if you haven't, welcome. But we've got the usual check-in, um, update and feedback in a second. Just a couple of online resources, and then I'm going to share with you my literature ideas and resources of the week. Then you've got your tea break to share ideas. Now, I am, just in case you've been before and you know that I often get lost and um, have a, a, a technical problem, I am definitely coming through the app today because I've had my son check for me, and I have a spare laptop standing by, so I'm totally on the ball. Let's look at feedback then. Um, your, this is from your feedback. I'm doing literature. I'm doing a drama introduction ideas, um, some starter activities for literature, and a couple of higher ability ideas. Next week's language. And just a shout out there, a lot of people are asking for things for Blood Brothers. I have included a little bit of Blood Brothers today. Um, Key stage three poetry is something people want a lot of as well. So hopefully I can revisit that in the future. But please, 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 please send us more resources in. Every other week, and it will be next week, we have a £25 draw for resources. So if you've sent a resource in, your name will go into the draw. And at the end of this session, we've got a £10 draw for something else as well. So again, it's all money, money, money. Nothing but the best. So we're going to just go for a quick check-in. We're thinking about 1914 text here. That's what I'm going to focus on. So what's your biggest issue when teaching them? Mine is always, always context. Um, what do you do in Key Stage 3 to introduce the text you teach? And how have you approached your text remotely? Or indeed, have you? Okay, It's often the first one that people cover in Key Stage 4, because it's often perceived to be the most approachable. So I can see that people are coming up with some ideas already. That's interesting that somebody says the language, um, linking context. Yeah, context. Everybody's coming about with context. Context first. Yeah. Um, not understanding how to include context in the answer. Absolutely, that's, that's my biggest problem. Students trying to tell you everything they know. Well, hopefully I've got something that will help you out with that. Depends if it's a drama or a prose. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Embedding context. Again, yeah, we're coming back to that. And hopefully I'm going to give you some ideas for getting context across in a little bit more of a dynamic way today, rather than actually treating it separately. Um, Key stage three, introduction to film. Yeah, good idea, just to get the basic plot across. Really tough distributing marks, 40 marks for this one compared with 20. I think that's something that we need to impress upon students to start with, is that this is worth double the questions on, on the Shakespeare and, um, and 19th century. I think that's really important. One thing I think is not done enough 
is actually teaching how to teach how to write an essay. Oh, some interesting answers here. Excuse me, squinting at the screen, but I have to have contact lenses for this, and they don't do small writing. I need a big, enlarged screen, actually. I have to look at putting it on the telly. Fewer resources available for Journey's End, totally appreciate, which we use for lower ability. Plenty of resources for Animal Farm, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, exemplar paragraphs people are using. Did a workbook. Yeah, a lot of people have done workbooks. There are quite a, a few good ones online. Certainly on Lit Drive if you use that. Oh, a staff production of, of Inspector Calls on Zoom. I saw one of those. I don't know if you were the people that did it on Twitter. That's Jane. Let me know, Jane, if you were the one that, that did it with... There was a, a, a lady called Laura who did popped a bit of it on Twitter this week, and it was wonderful. I really want my department to do that. I think it's a fantastic idea. And it really gets students involved because they can see you and hear you. I think that's fantastic. Interesting how context is important in an inspector cause, but not at all in Jekyll and Hyde. Yes, yes, that is a, an interesting one. Okay, I think we're just going to take the last couple there now. Oh, Jane says, yeah, props were fun. So it must be somebody else that did it online. Yeah. That's really interesting. What's coming across loud and clear there, then, is that context is an issue, which is good, because that's what I'm going to cover in a tiny way today. But also, I think one thing I've noticed, certainly in the schools I've taught at and where I am now, is that not enough emphasis is put on actually how to write an essay. And what an essay is, and in fact, I think that that needs um, introducing lower down the school, actually. But then somebody is saying they do it in key stage two. I think that's brilliant, actually. Use it, do it on a different text. Excellent. So if we could move away from that now, that would be brilliant. And go on to the next. I didn't get a chance to go through those. We've answered those questions. So I think that was interesting. That was, that was interesting. People saying that some texts are under-resourced. I agree. I resisted um, an inspector calls for about six years of my teaching profession because everybody did it. And in fact, I've only first taught it um, recently. I stuck to Blood Brothers just because I um, I used to do a, a school visit there to see it every year. But I, I particularly like it. Okay, online resources then very quickly. Art online, I'm having an art theme this week. The Guardian have got the best online art galleries. And if you just want something soothing, there's a, there's a the art gallery, and I've forgotten the name, somebody might know, it's the one in Madrid, and you can go and look at a timeline of artists, and it's really soothing just to sit there and look at some art, it was lovely. The other one, first sight, I added, um, Grace and Perry does a show on a Monday, I think it is, about art, apparently it's brilliant, I haven't seen it, but somebody recommended it to me, and there are art packs available there, if you've got younger children actually, they're brilliant, but I just thought there might be something there that you could link to literature, there's some really fantastic, if you like a bit of colouring yourself, and I do, Okay. Yes, it was Prada. Yes, well done. Thank you very much, Helen. Okay, next one. Um, if you've ever, if you've looked on Twitter recently, there's a lot of CPD going around in David's CPD session on strategies for boosting English engagement. I missed it because I was all set up and ready to go and I had a power cut. But you can access it online and it is supposed to be very, very good. So it might be interesting. English engagement might be an issue we have when we get back. Um, okay. And um, no excuses there for, no apologies there for, including a link to the wonderful, amazing Jennifer Webb, one of whose resources I'm going to show you later on. But her funky pedagogy site is brilliant. Her blogs are great, and all her resources are on there. Okay, so let's move on to my stuff. And we're dead on time, I think. Literature ideas and resources of the week. Now, I have mainly focused on Inspectacles and Blood Brothers, so apologies for that. But the, all these are completely, I'm, I'm not suggesting you use them as is, they're completely adaptable. Um, and you can, you know, you can take the idea away and use it for another one. And please send that to us if you do. So my first one is the idea of linking art to it, literature. Okay, so no prizes for guessing who the um, artist is here and probably what text I'm going to do. So I started with an Inspector Calls. And I came up with here. In how many ways could you link this to an Inspector Calls? Now, that seems like a very straightforward starter activity. Actually, you can, as you'll see from the following slides, you can take it as far as you as you want. And it's a really good to emphasize the context. I don't teach the context at all as a separate subject. I don't do the um, 
go away and research or anything because I just find they they tell me that the Titanic sank and it, they, they don't have any idea of whether that's relevant. And then they, they like to use the word patriarchy without really understanding what it means. This picture, though, really got it across. Now, there's loads happening here. There's the industrial background, which I think is great as a background. I like the idea of it being a background. The foreground is men, which the play does foreground. Sidelines, you've got the children. And you've also got the woman standing up there in the background looking after the children. So in terms of what's happening in society, you've got loads happening here. The men meeting about important things, um, smoking a pipe, kind of relaxed in each other's company, and looming across in the background all the time is the industrial, um, the, the, the kind of industrial revolution idea, or, you know, industrialization. So that's worked really, really well for me. Um, yeah, Rosa says we're doing AF uh, in Animal Farm, and the kids don't have any idea about communism. Yeah, I totally agree. But then if you were to show them through images and ideas that way, and actually a good book, I know, I know it's, not, um, it, it's not on the curriculum, but there, there's some great package passages in um, 1984 that would help you get across the idea of communism in a more um, fun way, perhaps. Now, here I've gone for Blood Brothers. I've gone for a different question this time. Does this link to Blood Brothers? So rather than the idea of... Um, how does it link? How, you know, does it link at all? Because the two brothers obviously are smiling. They're out in a park. They're together. Um, there's all sorts of things going on there. And it reminded me very much of my childhood because I think very much think that everybody when I was growing up had that haircut, regardless of whether they were male or female. So let me know if you also have that haircut. In fact, I think I have that haircut now, actually. Um, I desperately need to get to the hairdressers. Okay, next one. Oh, no, back. My mouse is a bit quick. Um, this, again, is another Lowry. How does this link to the theme of power in Inspector Calls? Now, I did a different, I took this a little step further. I asked them to come up with vocabulary. So, for instance, the domination of the factory in the background and the appearance of the disenfranchisement of the people standing in front of it, who appear to be disconnected from it. Um, the size of the people. Obviously, so the juxtaposition there. So it was actually about getting them to come up with more advanced vocabulary, okay, um, for that one. You can either give them the vocabulary and ask them to find something in the picture to link to it. So I would get this, um, a smaller version of this picture, and get them to stick it in their book and actually annotate around it. And before long, with that and the previous slide, you've got lots of the ideas going on about um, about the inspect tools. So I, I found them to be very useful. Okay, next one. I'm not getting a lot of comments today, actually. But somebody's saying lots of excellent documentaries for Animal Farm. Yes, absolutely, there are, and they're a good way of doing it, rather than actually overtly teaching it. And I find if I get the students to research it, all they do is find things off Wikipedia that they don't really understand. Um, here I've done Blood Brothers. How does this portrait of family life differ from that portrayed in Blood Brothers? So you've obviously got a lot going on here. You've got the presence of the man which even in the lion's household, he isn't around much. The fact that their parents are holding hands, look obviously happy together. The house is obviously quite affluent. And you could think about the idea of actually having a television in that time frame. The children who've obviously done an educational puzzle before they've lain down. Um, so that the whole kind of family life idea that actually there aren't, um, that there isn't a happy family really in either of the um, portrayals in Blood Brothers. And this is very much a stereotypical family life anyway it, it certainly isn't relevant to today so this helps to explore other parts of the of the of the deeper meaning in blood brothers about the whole single family um ideas as well oh somebody's put there are parallels with the film ashes in the snow oh good idea yes good idea okay so that's the blood brothers one for you moving on now i was doing a little bit of research about the context of Inspector Calls to find some pictures. And I found that the summer of 1913, which I know is the year after it's set, but, um, was a very long, hot summer. So I imagined how would the burning summer have differed to Eva's. So again, it's that other idea of actually looking at what Eva's life would have been like in the factory versus the Burling family, who may have aspired to go to Ascot, which is the middle picture at the top. And again, the whole idea of, of that intro to society, which is what Burling wants via his marriage and via um, and via um, his daughter's marriage. 
Somebody's put great pics, can't imagine Sybil swimming. No, I can't. But then actually I was thinking about Sheila swimming and actually that swimming in those costumes being actually very um, avant-garde in the time. So that's why I included that picture, because it actually not only does it represent the idea of holidays, but it represents the idea of female freedom as well to a degree, because they don't appear to our chaperone in the water. So I thought that, again, simple pictures like that have a lot of resonance with the text. You can draw out in a lot of ways what exactly does each picture say about the time. And you don't need to teach the context at all. It can just all come out this way. Um, the top right is um, I Googled, well, actually, foolishly, don't ever do it. I Googled Victorian prostitution. Don't do it. It, it was I disappeared down a hideous rabbit hole there. Um, because I wanted to think about what the end result of life would be for Eva. So there is, um, that came up when I put illegitimate children, um, Edwardian. So um, there you go. Um, that's kind of like the, the end, her prospects as well. So again, you've got the factories, you've got Ascot, you've got her prospects, you've got the holidays, you've got, um, would Eva ever get a holiday like that? Probably not. Okay. Somebody says, I love this. We've done a similar activity of what would a typical day be like for Mrs. Burling versus Eva Smith. Oh, I love that. Or another woman of her age in different class. If you did my, um, one of, if you, one of my language seminars a couple of weeks ago when I used the 1950s household management book, that's a really brilliant idea. I hadn't thought of that of what a day, a typical day should be like in the 1950s for a woman. Yes, that would be a really good resource to use with that. Excellent. Okay, sticking with an inspector calls, but slightly differently. One, another problem I have with any text, actually, um, drama in particular, is them writing about them as real people and not understanding, particularly with an inspector calls and obviously Animal Farm, that the characters really aren't as relevant as the message. Okay, they aren't intended to be fully, this isn't a character driven play, it is a message driven play. Okay, so this is what I came up with, and it, it was hugely successful actually, which is why I'm sharing it. So it's a, a strange task, but it's worked really well. So I call it create a morality play. So before I've even mentioned what play we're studying, nothing has happened. We talk about we're doing a play, and this is our interactivity. You are a playwright who wants to expose the dangers of social media to the world. You are going to use the following. Five characters, probably some from the same family. Three acts, one setting, one character who is mentioned but never seen. Come up with a brief plot line, plot outline and character sketches. Now you can see that I've gone for the Inspector Calls one there, but you could adapt it for any of the plays. Um, and I've had some fantastic ideas and they, they, they actually got so carried away they wanted to write the, the, the plays and act them and everything. It was really, really brilliant. And from then on, they always were able to look at the characters as somebody that Priestley just uses a mouthpiece for a particular um, for a particular um, idea. And I just chose social media because it seems to be relevant. Um, obviously, you could use whatever. So I found that was brilliant. And then I took it further, and I did for a higher ability. When they'd done that, they had that mix it up a little. So add an element of mystery. So now I'm, I'm now um, surreptitiously teaching the idea of the play having several genres. Okay, a mysterious visitor, and I'm improving their vocabulary by talking about an enigmatic ending. Okay, so now they're getting more into what the play is like. So then they had to then adjust their plots. Okay, um, and then the, this is the challenge. So I'm bringing in symbolism now, a prop which becomes a symbol of your main message. Actually, that, that was really, I thought they'd just come up with phones, but they came up with some fantastic ideas there on the social media. It was brilliant. Had some really, really insightful and creative ideas actually and they totally got it so that's the idea there of, of obviously the the symbols that, of the photograph and the telephone etc um well somebody's put in capitals thank you Natalie. Lovely. i have to say of all the starter how to introduce a play activities this has been by far and away the most successful and they then approach the play with dare i suggest a little bit of excitement about how those five characters were and what they were. Who was the mysterious visitor? Who was the character um, mentioned but never seen? Why weren't they seen? There was just loads of things going on. It was absolutely fantastic. So um, enjoy and do let me know if you if you adjust that. Now, then I thought of Blood Brothers and I thought, mm, it's not going to work as well because when I put it on the screen, two brothers separated at birth, you kind of, that's it, isn't it? That's the issue. So I turned it on its head and I did this. Oh. 
you are a playwright who is writing a play with the following cast of characters. Two brothers separated at birth, one married couple, one single mother, one pretty girl, two different house settings. What are you trying to tell society? So I've done it the other way now. Um, I'm asking them what that would expose. And that's good because that gets them to think about... Um, I've only done this once, actually, and that was a couple of years ago with Blood Brothers. And it was with a weaker ability group. So I didn't get as exciting a response. But they did all come to the idea of nature and nurture. And they did actually get, they got more out of the idea of single mother versus married couple um, than I expected. But that was brilliant because often that's overlooked in the, um, in the play. And their response to single parenthood is also really valid in terms of um, attitudes to it in the 60s and attitudes to it now, for instance. Because an awful lot of the students I teach have parents who aren't married. So it's a wholly different um, um, social stigma, really, which is interesting. Somebody said, lovely ideas. Somebody that said they've done something similar with Macbeth. What would you do if you received a prophecy that you would be rich and famous? Fabulous. I went to a, um, a fortune teller when I was about 20, and they said that I'd never worry about money, but that I would have lots and lots of children. And actually, we do have five between us. So I've obviously forgotten everything that never came true. Um, this is excellent. Really excited to try this out. Great. I'd love to hear. Obviously, these don't transpose very well um, remotely. Well, then maybe they do. Maybe you could do that remotely, actually. You could design the play and then feed it forward to the classroom going forward. OK, so that was the exciting bit. Here's another little activity, one of my, oh, one of my four corner activities. Um, and somebody, I saw this on Twitter recently, somebody had done a whole pack of year nine pre and spectacles activities that was similar to this, but I did do this a while ago. Um, so you've got, these are the opening stage directions, which are underutilized, I often find. Um, the students tend to read past it, which is a shame. So make these stage directions into the start of the play, um, using only dialogue and body language. Update it, write your own updated stage directions for a privileged family living in the 21st century. That tends to be a bit Kardashian, but it was interesting anyway to see, uh, if nothing else, but to see what the students thought was privilege. And to discuss that. Um, create a fact file about what life was like for a wealthy family. I haven't called it a research document, but um, and I haven't gone for research the First World War. It's more you actually have to do some research there rather than just um, putting Wikipedia on the page. Um, and make it using priestly stage directions only. Draw, make a model of the setting. I think lots of people do that. Um, Jenny says, we spend a quite a bit of time with these opening pages. They're very rich. They are, absolutely, yeah. Um, Sarah says, I'm thinking of making the morality play idea an interclass lockdown competition. Fabulous. Oh, I'd love to see some of the, um, some of the responses you get there. That's brilliant. Um, this is great. The weaker students could choose which activity. Yeah, absolutely, they can, and they do. Brilliant, yeah. So that's the four corner activity. And you can put whatever you want in there from the play. Now... I went online for something um, completely different about Inspectacles, and I came up with, and you, I'll, I'll show you the link, and you might have found it anyway, this might be old hat, but I found Priestley's typewritten notes, you might, might use this already, from 1972, when it was presented at the Mermaid Theatre. And um, it, it's hard for you to read there, so I've given you the link to the actual, where you can find the actual document. And again, this is an idea of, trying not to research Priestley and come up with those kind of start of the ten questions, but actually to get some deeper thinking. Now, he said, he starts off by saying it was translated immediately into Russian, so why? And then just a quick one, what was the Iron Curtain, just to add to their general knowledge, actually. And then, why do you think the reaction of audiences was almost always exactly the same? Now, that's quite a deep question, actually, and that, that my students had a lot of trouble with that. They came up with bland ones when everybody enjoys it. Um, but actually, that you know, once they've got halfway through the play, they, they could see it had some universal themes there. And then the fourth was something I was discussing this with Pam, actually, at the beginning. And we were both saying we'd never really thought of this. So if you have, um, don't tell me, because I, I don't want to feel really stupid. But he says here that the second inspector, he, he says, actually, that um, he gets loads and loads of letters from students saying, who is the inspector? explain him. And he said, interestingly enough, nobody ever asks about the second inspector, who he terms really the key to the whole play. So that, I thought that was really interesting. Um, and 
Um, Pam and I were suggesting that we're going to set that next year. Eric are going to set that next year as the question. Oh, shouldn't have told you that. That was a joke. Um, so, yeah, second in, why is the second inspector really the key to the whole play? And he says that 1912 is another key to the whole play that students don't ask him about. So there you go. Um, and then if you go follow that link, you will find the director of the play in 1972 has written his notes. And here is one of them, a stag activity. Now, I do quite a lot of these. And every week, Pam says, Julie, you've made lots of spelling errors. Um, I give them critiques that I use as spelling checks. And it's a sneaky way of getting in higher order ideas rather than me just telling them. Um, and this is just an interesting one. But those program notes are really interesting to use, actually. So if you want to research those, um, you, you're welcome. Um, next one. This is a really successful idea. It's a critique. I've used this quite a lot. I give them that on a small piece of paper. They stick it into the middle of an A4 or an A3, and they have to answer every one. So, for instance, Priestley became a conservative life peer. They can't just say no. They have to say why he wouldn't have. Um, the Burling factory has a workers' consultation group. So why do you think it would have? Might it have at the end? Might Eric Institute one? Again, it's all adding to their understanding. Um, Sybil Burling's charity will drop her when they find out who the father was. Now, the one that went down best was Joe Megaty would probably have married Eva had she lived, had he had the opportunity. Um, a lot of students actually wonder. Joe Megaty, I think, is a, in, in Inspector Calls, is an is a underutilised character, actually. Um, a lot of students felt that he had and they'd missed it. So I had to explain no. Um, Gerald and Sheila will hold their wedding reception in the Palace Bar. So again, the whole idea of why wouldn't they? Why would they aspire to something different? And um, yeah, people are saying weaker students could choose which activity. Um, but weaker students can choose which activity on this, which critique on this, they don't have to go for all of it. Okay, so Lillian says, this is also excellent. Thanks for this. And that, you can do that. I've seen it done for in, uh, on, of Mice and Men, and I've seen it done recently for of Mice and Men. It's fab. You can actually just have wrong things that they cross out and have to put the right thing for a weaker group. It just helps with plot, um, with plot ideas. But I find it's great for higher ability for critiques, actually. Um, and they can really develop them. And I, I do a lot of white space activity where they have to literally fill the whole thing around the outside with higher order ideas. Because otherwise, in spectacles, just gets a bit samey, doesn't it? Same horse, different jockey is what I say. Let's have a bit of difference. Oh. Now, this is um, no apologies here for plugging one of our, our um, recent resources. We've made some PowerPoint lessons. If you haven't seen them before, you'll get the link, I think, later on, or you may already have used them. They are, there's one on Inspector Calls, one on Jekyll and Hyde, one on Poetry, and one on Christmas Carol. And it takes the students through how to write an essay. Okay. Now, I just wanted to show you this slide, because I use this idea a lot of, let's just start with the plot. And a lot of you said in the intro there that one of the problems is they don't know how to write an essay. And they don't know how to approach it. They don't know how to come up with different points. So, or somebody said the PowerPoint lessons are useful. Good, thanks, Scott. Um, so I always say, what what can you find from the plot? And obviously, I ask them to add anything to the plot that isn't that they think needs um, linking. And then they add themes in if it's a character question or, or or character in if it's themes. But it does help just to kind of get them started on how many things could I say? So that's if you go to the PowerPoint lessons that Liz has put the link up for, you'll find the the whole lesson there for Inspector Calls and Christmas Carol, same theory. And we're just about to do them. Actually, a good plug there. By the end of June, we will have the new um, diverse texts. I'm doing don't, I'm doing Boys Don't Cry and um, Quorum Boy. And we're doing exactly the same thing, how, talking through how to write an essay. Now, then I found another thing. I've been using this for ages. I'm sure you all do. It's the BBC um, little picture there. And I use that for weeks groups. So I'll give them that and say, look, that's the basic plot. And I might, as a starter activity, say, add all the things that aren't there, so add everything that you can think of in the right order, and then tell me which parts of the plot are relevant to a question about Sheila. So here, stage directions. They can go right to the beginning. And 
when she um, gets to the fact she's jealous of Eva's looks, what does that suggest about her? Sheila begs her mother to stop. So even if they just use this and get some ideas around the side, they'll have four or five things to say that are different and that show her development. Um, and then, or well, somebody said, good, looking for more support with a diverse sex. We do, boys don't cry. Great, Hayley. Great. I'd like to know how you're getting on with that. Brilliant. Um, and here's Blood Brothers, and I've just started off there with, again, if you were to write a, an essay about the importance of the relationship between the two women, um, obviously you start off with the fact that Mrs. Johnson opens the play. <clears throat> she sings, whereas Mrs. Lyons comes on, and the first thing she does is put a pair of expensive shoes down. So it's that kind of very different. So if you do it that way, it's less threatening, I think, than being faced with a blank planning sheet. So I do a lot of that in the early stages to, to show them how much they can... Um, yes, the images are from bite size, yeah. To show them how much they can get, um, <coughs> excuse me, just from the um, plot. Right, last thing now. Just about on time. The wonderful Jennifer Webb in her book... I don't have... I only have one of her books in front of me now which is this one. Her latest one is Teach Like a Writer. But the previous one was English Literature, and that is fantastic. Now, from English Literature, she is unapologetic about um, aiming really, really high with her students for vocabulary and critical, detached style. And that is something that I find is woefully lacking in my students in essay questions, answers, even the higher ability. And I realize it's because I haven't taught them enough, or they haven't had that lower down the school. So this is nothing new, it's just called something different, um, and it may have things on you haven't used before, but this is a, almost a direct copy of hers, so I'm not, I'm giving her total credit for that. But you can, on her website that I gave you at the beginning, if you go on it, you can find um, her version of this. You can download it, or we can let you have the Word copy, Word document of this. Um, analytical words, for instance, I mean, I, I've moved totally away from P paragraphs, but you get that you just get bored with suggests this suggests this suggests this shows so things like creates evokes illustrates portrays high implies and we actually have discussions about which word which analytical verb is most appropriate does it illustrate or does it highlight and what the difference is there does it illuminate um obviously comparisons and links connectives um everything is there really um, the structural tension is not one I've thought before. You know, this builds, this develops, this strengthens, this reinforces. So lots of kind of verbs there that I haven't really thought about using before. So that I found that the book very useful from that point of view. It, it sounds a bit sort of something we all do all the time, but it really gave me a different viewpoint on it by looking at um, at the verbs. And obviously they have those in the classroom to use or they could put them in the book. But yes, the example at the bottom is not a P paragraph. And that is taken directly from Jennifer. Um, and she doesn't mind people um, passing on her ideas and say she, you can get them on her website. But yeah, Blake portrays London as a place of misery and despair. Marks of woe conveys this because. So again, that whole idea of not dumping a, uh, not dumping a, a, a quotation just randomly in. People are saying, could we have a copy of this? Yeah, I'm sure I can um, arrange for the, for the word copy to go out to you. So I'll make sure Pam's got that at some point. Um, but I just felt that they, lacked, they didn't lack the ideas, they lacked the vocabulary to express them eloquently. And this changed, you know, every essay, they were sat there with, oh, does this symbolise? And then they were like, oh, I haven't thought of symbolising. Oh, I could write about the ring now. Or I could write about the photo. What does that symbolise? So it actually took the thought process further um, all the time. So that's the final resource for today. So hopefully that's been interesting. We're going to now take a break from my voice. And we're going to go into tea breaks, and I think you're going to get a couple of questions here. So you'll go into a group, there'll be somebody from Pearson with you to guide and take your ideas. And then at the end, it'd be really, really, really great if one of you, three of you, four of you, some of you, wanted to put your hand up vertically, and vertically, I don't mean that, do I? I mean um, virtually, and give a contribution and sum up what your group have come up with, which would be great. So let's go into our groups, please. Okay, you there, Pam? Yes, Julie, are you? Hi, I'm here, yes. We're all here. Lovely, three of us. Yeah. Um, Liz, do you want to go first? Yeah. Oh, can you see me still? Yeah, yeah I can see you, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, 
Right, we did have lots of good ideas. A lot of them did revolve around drama and setting up um, freeze frames, um, different activities, um, setting out a scenario using paper money to show capitalism Brilliant. and who ended up with what at the end. Um, a debate was another idea um, and also the use of pictures to show different themes and also the use of props. Hmm. And so that we Brilliant. had quite a few good ideas going around there. Yeah, well, you mentioned about the um, about the money. Somebody in our group, Jane, was saying that they try and they do a game oh, of Monopoly for Inspector Calls. They do it that way, that works really well, yeah. which I thought was a good idea. Um, lots of people saying in terms of what they thought of today's resources, they thought they were great, and they were saying how they were really, you know, excited about having to use, they could use them themselves Why? and adapt them, etc. Do you know what? That's a gap in the market. Why have nobody thought of producing an Inspector Calls or Animal Farm Monopoly? There you go. Yeah, I know, well, there you go. You should have said that to you. But, yeah, but you see, I'm not a Burling, am I, Pam? I'm not a Burling, so I won't, I won't, I won't oh. dash on that idea, if I'll allow. Somebody said copyright it. No, Rosa, I'm obviously on the wrong side oh, of the fence. I'll, I'll, I'll let somebody else take my idea. I'll... Actually, Jane's got to do it. It was her idea. <laughs> oh, the kids create the um, said. Yeah, there we go. Let's just put that um, I also had Jane and Jen... Sorry, I was going to say, Jane and Jenny said that... Um, role plays etc uh, Nicole I think it was Nicole not Nicola said they do oh, yeah. courtroom drama which I thought was good I've done that myself in the past it's always a good one um link up with the drama yeah, yeah. department and that's a good idea as well so you could do things around that and obviously people were saying about how you know they do role play try to compare the context of a female then compared to today yeah. you know which is which is brilliant and all those those other ideas and using pictures as well from what you were saying before in your other email uh, email webinar Brilliant. so yeah lots of one, really good ideas good one that came up with us it was a, um, a lady called amy who said give them newspaper articles about current events and get them to say how the character would react to them so how would berlin react how would um, react oh, that's a good oh, idea, yeah isn't it? i think particularly about what's happening at the moment there could be some really good articles that you could use at the moment for both for, uh, very much for animal farm very much for um for most of the text actually so i thought that was a really good idea Another one using uh, the Isn't film it? Daniel Blake. That's, uh, uh, that that cropped up a couple of times. There's a speech at the end um, that they could use to write oh, Eva's yeah. speech for it, which I thought was a great idea. Um, okay. As Rose, yeah, it, it does, does feel like we're in a bit of a dystopia much, at the yeah. moment, doesn't it? But anyway, not with it. I always think I I started off doing these feeling like I I felt like a radio presenter, and then I had a look earlier and I thought. A film that was on the other day um, that I was watching was Mrs. Doubtfire, and I think I'm 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 more of a Mrs. Doubtfire now, aren't I? I'm feeling it. anyway. You're free to say no. Um, right, I'm going to leave you with Pam for a moment because we're going I'm to look sure. at um, we're going to look at shared resources. Oh, yes. Now I'm going to leave it to Pam to tell you why there aren't any. So over to Pam. Hello, everybody. I'm still here. Um, yeah, so with regard to shared resources, as you know, we gave out uh, an Amazon voucher for £25 for last week for someone who'd, uh, who'd gone in the draw for the resources. Um, we've had a couple in this week, but we've had quite a few in this week, but they're not really literature based. And um, we've had a couple from people who've left student names on. So if they could, if you could make sure that you don't, you know, if you take those off first, because obviously data protection, we can't show those. So there's nothing I'm actually going to put on screen today because we've had a lot recently. So, you know, for the previous um previous folder we put together which is great and as I said to you we're in the process of getting a web page up and running so when that's up and running all the resources will be on there as well and obviously we'll tell you where that is when we get to that point but yes, please do, while yeah, I'm on here do Julia should I do it. the other draw? It's for and go for it yeah okay so, so in yesterday's um, government briefing I got bored oh I shouldn't say that I wasn't bored at all it was really riveting but what I decided to do was um, cut up the names of the people who have done the uh, feedback survey last week and I found a lovely little Christmas cup hanging about. It seems to be the only vessel that would really do it. So I put the names in here. So this is a draw for the people who did the feedback survey. So we're going to do this every week. So at the end, you know, make sure you do the survey. Your name gets put in a draw, gets pulled out. Like now, let's do it. Drum roll. Oh, I hope the is here. Hold on. And today's winner is Laura. Now, I'm not allowed to say your surname, Laura, for data protection, but it's Laura W. So are you here, Laura? If you are, oh, you've won a 10 yeah. Amazon. Oh, hey, it all works, this is so exciting. This is, we've moved into a, 
I think we've moved into a different league, Pam. We're not only doing a double act. I haven't been, I haven't um, crashed and burned at all today. I've been with you the whole time. Oh, it's on. Yep. But, and you know what? Just that you're right. And just to say, Laura, it was meant to be a weekend for two in Paris, but because there's no planes or trains, it's a £10 Amazon voucher. So Hopefully that's, that's suffice. your incentive to fill in the um, feedback form at the end um, for us, if you would, please. And obviously to send in resources, because the um, Pam's going to do the same next week with resources. The name's going to hat, and that's £25. So that's big, that's big. And that's, yeah. Lovely. Right, I'll, I'll go now, Julie, and leave you to it. So um, we'll contact you about the voucher. I'll send it to you when I get your email address, which right. we will get Thanks, to the feedback. Thank you okay, very much. Okay, not much Bye left, now. really, then. We're at the end, pretty much at the end now. Um, obviously, you've got the address there, the full English at Pearson, so go ahead there and send your resources in. Obviously, as Pam said, try and take names off, or indeed any school identification as well, because otherwise we won't be able to share them. And even if you've just adapted a resource you've seen on here, really, please send it in. Um, everybody likes to, to see that. Let's look through what else we've got, just to make sure you know. Um, oh, yeah, exciting news here. Got language next week, and the week after that, we're going to do something slightly different. We are being joined by Kat Howard, who you may have heard from, who, of who runs Lit Drive UK. Now, we're going to make it more of a, um, I don't know what you call it really, a therapy session perhaps. Kat's written a really interesting book that I've left in the other room at the moment, but it's called Stop Talking About Wellbeing. And she may well talk about that, but she just, well, she's going to talk. So it's going to be less about resources and more about Kat's wisdom. So it'd be really exciting if you could join us. And then hopefully in future we're going to have other guest speakers. We've got a couple of names lined up, so not often, maybe monthly. Because we are hoping to carry these on, obviously until the end of lockdown. And that was something I want to mention before I move on is my school are planning a return on the 1st of June. And out of personal interest, I just want you now to put onto the group chat yes or no, whether you have already had plans to move to go back for years 10 and 12 on the, um, on the 1st. People are saying no, yeah. Oh, no, no, yes, yes, half and half. Yes, based on, yeah. We are returning on it. So it's mainly no. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you very much. That's great. It's about, I suppose it's about 50 50, but mainly later on the 15th of June. Okay. Thanks. That was just interesting from a personal point of view because it came as a bit of a bolt out of the blue. Um, okay, moving on then. Just looking about what more we can do to help. There's the usual slides here, and I, I'm going to take these off eventually. But just to let you know that you've still got the, um, they're not new anymore, but you've got the links there for the knowledge organisers and for the um, lessons and, and the online learning pack for Jeffrey and Hyde. And I think they've already been used. And as I say, coming up, we've got the diverse text. And then what we've also got, excitingly, support packs from York Notes. And then we've got Free online lessons for Year 10 students, okay, starting on 3rd of June. So you've got the link there. Six weekly 45 minutes lessons, and they are delivered by an English teacher who has done other work for Ed Excel, who's absolutely brilliant. So there you go. That is well worth a look. I think that's a really a brilliant resource there. So make sure you have a look at that. And then there's our secondary resources page. And then we end, as usual, with the lovely Claire, who is, uh, I don't think with us today, she often is, but she's your first port of call. We also have, and it doesn't seem to be, oh, it is, is it here? There's the link there to the WhatsApp group. Okay, so there's your feedback, which we're going to do in a moment. We finished a little bit early today because I didn't have quite so many resources and I didn't talk for so long. The WhatsApp group's up and running. People have already had some help and support from it. I'm on it as well. So um, people are saying they're not always getting the email or the PowerPoint. Um, Lisa, if you put that in the Q&A box, you you probably get um, a chance for somebody to have a look at that for you. Um, somebody's saying they're doing a homework booklet, they're going to share it. Um, people are saying time and place poetry, please. Okay. So if you want to, in the last couple of minutes um, on the group chat, just maybe let me know what, if anything, you want for the language one. The following week, as I've said already, I'll be taking a bit of a back seat and it'll be over to Cat Howard, and then I'll be back on the usual format as well. So. Thanks, people are saying thanks very much, Julie, as always. Thank you for joining us. We always recognise you have a choice. Thanks very much. So I'll leave you now to do the feedback, and the group chat will be there for a while. But I'll just sign off. Thanks very much. See you next week. Bye.